What's up, everyone? It's me, Ivan, and we're back editing uh, the Acolyte. So in previous videos, we've talked about some of the major problems with, with the show, like the pacing or the lack of music or that the music, in, 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 in a sense, it feels like it's just filler noise. There's really not a melody to it or anything like that. Uh, we've talked about the first impressions of certain characters, and that's what we're going to be revisiting today. The first impression of one specific character that represents a larger scale. So let's just go into the into the uh, into the program, and how did I used to transition from this to like I used to do that, right? I think back in the day I used to clap, and it's like, oh, we're here. All right. Anyways, we're here. All right. <laughs> Dude, this is bringing so many memories. All right. So originally in the scene, after fixing the fire in space, that if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and watch it. Uh, we, we have one of my most despised characters. I really don't like this character at all in the original series because of many things that we are about to to see. All right, let's continue. Let's let's just watch. Let's see what happens. So in the original in the original series, right after the fire in space scene, we have the Jedi walking into the into the into the ship. What do we owe the pleasure of Jedi presence on our humble ship? And they're like, "Oh, what do we owe the pleasure?" Now, here's here's the thing. The Jedi are looking for someone, right? And remember, this is what I want you to keep in mind during this scene. What is the purpose of this scene? What is the purpose? Let's just continue watching. My name is Yord Fandar, Knight of the Jedi Order, and this is my Padawan, Tosiloa. We are looking for a former Jedi by the name of Osha Anaseya. Uh -huh. This is a cargo. So, so they come in and they say, we are Jedi. This is my name, blah, blah, blah. We're looking for Osha. Then we have the female alien being like, eh, doing that weird noise for some reason. Go ship. We have no passengers. She's a mechanic. Freelance out of ship repair. She bunks ship to ship. Then that, that's what we establish, right? That she's a mechanic that bounces from, from place to place. Okay. All right. Let's continue. Why would we have mechanics here? The Republic has legislated that only droids may perform out of ship. Then we establish that, look, no, like the mechanics, like they're, they're not, they're not good. And this is the part that pisses me off right here. Repair. Uh, uh. Sublevel, bunk 23. That part pisses me off a lot. That right there. Thank you for your cooperation. So generic black guy, haircut guy, was about to just like force his way into this, into the ship. The Jedi are not like that. The Jedi are not supposed to be like that. And if he's not going to be the villain, then why do we have him do villainous things? Like in this, in this scene, the Jedi, He's the first representation that we've seen of a Jedi, technically, like with with dialogue and speaking. We we saw a Jedi being killed, like at the beginning of the movie, but that was to have the first impression of the Acolyte as a threat, because she's going to be a more significant character than Trinity. But here, this is like our legit first impression of a Jedi. So we see him being a, a jerk like just like i'm about to control your mind bitch so that that's that dude it grinds my gears a lot it really does so what did i do let's uh let's 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 rewind a little bit this is how the scene starts right we have the scene of fire in space and then the opening of the door all right now let's recap what the scene showed. It showed that she is far away from home. She's kind of like reclusive. The Jedi are looking for her. And that she's a mechanic. 
Now, let me ask you, have we established that she's a fucking mechanic? Yes, we've established that she's a mechanic. Is the point of living in a ship as a mechanic being illegal? Does it come out? Does it come up in any other point during the story? No. So it's not necessary that we touch on it. That's 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 a point that we really do not need. Because it's not going to be brought up ever again in the series. So we don't need that dialogue of like, oh, we don't we don't have mechanics in this in the ship. This is a, a, a why we like we don't need it. So we can eliminate it. So what I decided to do instead. As soon as we see the Jedi, friends of yours, friends of yours, we see her reflecting, and I just go into her going into her bunker. Like, it's already implied because he just said, friends of yours, and she didn't respond, that maybe she has a connection. And because immediately we go into this... Your, with a smile. She knows him. Let's not, like, the audience doesn't need to be, like, hand-holding all the time. Like, you can let the audience really know a lot by just a couple of things. Oh, friends of yours? Hmm. Your. Obviously, they were friends at some point, or they're friends now. Like, you don't have to... You can just cut the entire dialogue of the of the aliens and it doesn't affect the story because we're still establishing that there's a connection between them. And during the conversation that she has with the Jedi, you'll see that the same thing that was touched on during the conversation with the aliens, it's touched on here in a more better in a, in a better way. So let's continue. The first impression that we also have is this guy doing a little like tucky tuck that does with the cape and I don't know why I just don't like it. Look. <laughs> just <laughs> like let me not sit on this. Like I don't know. It just it just felt awkward, so I decided to cut it. George? Now, this is the this is the other this is the other thing. When she comes in, your, this is what happens. Your? <laughs> you finally passed your trials. I made night two years ago. So you see, that's like this as an impression as like, yeah, I made night. Like, hey, I, I just became a Jedi. And, and his demeanor is not one of a jerk. And just because this is the first impression that we have of him, being like with a, with a caring demeanor, uh, you know, like still with that, with that poise of a Jedi, it becomes a much better first impression as of him trying to like control the mind of an innocent bystander. And because I wanted to emphasize the fact that he's a Jedi, I decided to add subtly the theme of the force in the background just to kind of accentuate the fact that we are meeting a Jedi. George? <laughs> you finally passed your trials. I made night two years ago. Never thought I would see the day. <laughs> <laughs> you see? So now it becomes more of a gentler t transition. Now let's continue with the scene. Let's see what happens later. Corpsec is about as far away from Coruscant as you can get. So, uh, what are you doing here then? I just wanted to pay your old friend a visit. So, obviously we already have we are about to find out that someone is looking for her, right? So that's why we have this reaction. But he just said something very important. Hey, you're as far away from home as possible. So we can already, like, we already know that she's kind of like a runaway. They know each other. We With this scene, we've already established that they know each other, that she has some sort of connection to the Jedi. 
she used to be friends with the Jedi and that she's like really far away from where she's supposed to be. All of those things that we kind of already established with the scene that we cut away, we have them here. So there's really no reason to have the aliens, the, the aliens dialogue. And especially we fix a little bit of his image. Now, this is, this is the important thing. When she goes to reach out, I have this little subtle like music to kind of like emphasize like a little bit of doubt. Here then, I just wanted to pay your old friend a visit. You hear in the background just subtly, just doo -doo -doo. What's going on, Yord? So obviously, because that was a reaction that she wasn't expecting, she goes, "What's going on?" This this scene is very important. All right, so let let's continue. The pattern one walks in. I think it's best you take a seat. Best you take a seat. Now, let's go to the original scene. So how long have you been a mechanic? And here we have this part that, again, kind of makes the Jedi look like assholes, like legit. And that's a problem that we have, like, throughout the entire series, that the Jedi kind of look like jerks, like really just like those abusive space cups, you know? So what I'm trying to do here is to make the situation a little bit more real. Yes, they, they are going to arrest her. There's no cutting around it. But at least let's, let's make it more of a our hands are tied and don't want to do this as supposed to let's just grill you because we already know, you know? So that's kind of the attitude with the Padawan as she comes in. Since I left the order, so six years. Dangerous job. Dangerous job. It has its perks. Then, <laughs> this part. Look, I was trained to be a Jedi. When that didn't pan out, those skills aren't exactly uh, transferable. I needed a paycheck. So she says that she lived their order because she needed a paycheck and that skills of a Jedi are not transferable. Uh, bitch, you know how to fight. You, you know how to use the force. Like... You're you you're a monk. Like clearly, there must be a job in space that can give you like you know money. Plus, the Jedi like don't need that kind of shit. But it's okay. So all that all that conversation is not really necessary because further down the plot, where it's revealed that she used to be a Jedi, I have it the first time that we find out that she used to be a Jedi with her former master. Like, later down the edit, where we find out that she was actually trained to be a Jedi, came on a conversation with her former master. That is more impactful to reveal than during this conversation, where she's like, yeah, I used to be a Jedi, but I kind of wanted money. Like, she diminishes the value of being a Jedi and makes it look more as a job than anything. And now, leaving the Order might be just emotional conflict or something, but it's never going to be revealed that it was because of money. <laughs> like, what the fuck? When did you join the Order? When I was eight. Your knows all of this. A major concern about admitting you to the Order was your age. And the fact that you were mourning. So again, we have these things, like she was mourning and that she came into the Order late. Those things will come later in the edit, but right now it just feels like heavy exposition and make the Jedi look like jerks. My circumstances were unique, but the Jedi Council made their decision. You lost your entire family. Again, like, we are already going to find this out, but we're going to find out through visuals, not by telling. All of this conversation really feels like super heavy exposition. And it's not helping the pacing of the story move along. Your mothers, your sister, your village all died in the fire before Master Soul brought you into the Jedi. Your training was difficult to say the least. And, and, and again, are we going to see this later? Yes, we're going to see it. 
We're going to see it. We, we don't need to hear it right now. Attachments to those we have lost are the most difficult to let go. So why are you here? So there you go. <laughs> like we've just had this expository spill and now this serves as a, as a connection. So, okay, okay. So what's the purpose of this scene? <laughs> That's kind of what the writer is saying right now. Last night, a Jedi was murdered on Ueda. Who? Master Indara. And that's when we pick up the actual, like, plot. Someone was murdered. Who? Indara. The suspect matched your description. The suspect matched your description. You think that I killed her? Where were... Then we go into, you think that I killed her? And then they continue with the, with the questioning. Where were you last night? Where were you last night? On this freighter, in this room. Wh why would I kill Indara? And then she goes, and then we fall back into exposition. Why would I kill Indara? Blah, blah, blah. If I recall correctly, Master Indara advised the Jedi Council to discontinue your training. Then we go like, oh, and Dara advised that the Jedi Council, like, now let me ask you, is that ever going to be brought up again? No. Do we need it? No. Training when you were... Leaving the Jedi was the hardest thing that I've ever done, but it was my decision. No one else's. So again, we are already falling back into exposition. You really think I'm capable of betraying the Order? Then she goes, do you really think I'm capable of betraying the Order again? Kind of the same question that she already asked. Do you think I'm capable of, of killing her? Overpowering a Jedi Master and murdering her? Overpowering a Jedi Master and killing her? Like, that question was already asked. She really, she legitimately asked, do you really think I killed her? But then we have like another page of dialogue to come back to the same question. Do you think I would really betray the order by overpowering a Jedi master and killing her? Like, girl, you already asked this. Get her! Then somehow out of the blue, they brought the, the bartender to say, yeah, that's her. Like they are already said like, hey, your looks match the description of the killer. They already have the information. They don't need this redundant confirmation. She killed the Jedi and ruined my bar. And it just kind of sounds cheesy. She killed the Jedi and ruined my bar. I demand reparations. It doesn't matter what I think. And then we have this random ass line it doesn't matter what i think like this doesn't hit anymore because she already asked the question twice and the answer to the question was exposition and then the silly bartender is the bartender going to ever be brought up again no do we need it no then we continue then we establish again this the, the little robot now that you've been identified, a prison transport will take you back to Coruscant. And now we're talking, to, okay, we're, we're going to take you in. All right. And then we see this Iron Man looking dude. We continue. We continue walking. You're making a mistake. Then she's like, you're making a mistake. Blah, blah, blah. Continue, continue. All right. All of that scene served what purpose? Let me ask, what purpose did that scene serve? We know that she has a connection to the Jedi. We know that an assassin that matches her looks, it's on the loose. Okay. We see that there's a, there's, a, there's a connection. All right. But what happens? Why is this scene so heavy? Well, there's a lot of exposition, a lot of redundant questions. Uh, the Jedi look very jerkish, very asshole-ish. And if they're supposed to have like, a, like an urgency for the matter, 
then something needs to happen. Let's go into the fix. I think it's best you take a seat. Then she takes the seat. And instead of going again into that whole spiel from before, like, how long you been a magnet? How long? Let's just go to the chase. Last night, a Jedi was murdered on Ueda. Who? Because she is like, hey, you better take a seat. Like, I'm about to drop some heavy news. Instead of drop a, like, very asshole sounding interrogation, it's like, hey, let me tell you what's going on. You better sit down. Someone killed a Jedi. Who? That way, like, the, the news are given that, that impact. Master Indara. The suspect matched your description. All right, we're, we're already, like, we're already in. There's no need. Like, we, we already established that she has a connection to, to the Jedi because of the way she greeted him. It's like, oh, you came to see your old friend. And then we're like, oh, someone killed a Jedi. Now she reveals that she knows. You think that I killed her? Where were you last night? On this freighter. So we, we, we continue with that. But here's the thing. No one else's that I've ever done, but it was my decision. She mentions, she mentions that she left the order. Just by saying that, we already established that she was part of it. So we don't need to go into the whole exposition rant, right? No one else's. He, he signals the Padawan to go and do something. But this is where it, this is the, this is the subtlety and the important thing. You really think I'm capable of betraying the Order, overpowering a Jedi Master and murdering her? Because she has never asked prior during the scene, do you really think I killed her? We just go with the, with the last question. Do you really think I'm capable of la yada 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 yada? So what I did is that I grabbed her reaction, the original reaction, from um, from when she she was um, this reaction when she asked the first question, I just grabbed that reaction and then I grabbed the audio from when he says it doesn't matter what I think to respond that question and immediately we go into the into the holding cell. You really think I'm capable of betraying the order, overpowering a Jedi Master and murdering her? It doesn't matter what I think. That's it. You move along. You you move with the with with the point. So right now, that scene that served as a exposition dump of a lot of things that are not necessarily important right now that we're going to show later. Now it becomes like, hey, my friend, you better sit down. What's going on? Someone killed a Jedi, and the. Uh, uh, it matches your description. Do you really think I did it? It doesn't matter what I think. That way, the first impression that we have of, of this Jedi is one more of like, hey, I do care about you. But because we end on that note of like, hey, it doesn't matter what I think. And we don't see them grilling her with like very asshole sounding questions. Now the Jedi look like, hey, my, our hands are tied. Like, legitimately, the hands are tied. That way, we, we don't see the Jedi as, like, fucking space cops, but we see them more of, like, hey, we gotta do something about this, and I'm sorry. You see what I mean? That's the importance of details. That's the importance of, like, consistency and pacing. Now, a scene that was initially, like, four minutes long, it's only a minute and a half. And it just moves faster. And it gets to the point quicker. Let me know if you like this fix and I'll be talking to you later.